Merry Christmas, baby. Reindeer's coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to day six of the holiday card series for 2022. Today I'm starting out with the Tall Pines embossing folder. I'm going to be using that today. In fact, I'm not really starting out with that. I'm going to set that aside while I do some ink blending. I don't know that I've ever done an ink blended embossed background in this particular way before, so I thought I'd give it a try. I'm going to start by ink blending my background before doing my embossing. And I'm using a three, it's going to turn into four different colors of Distress Oxide ink. My idea is to go from a very, very pale blue, fading into a more bright blue, and then an intense darker blue. So I started with tumbled glass, I then brought in some salty ocean, and then moved to blueprint sketch. And at first I thought I would only use these three colors, but as you can see, as I start adding blueprint sketch, it's not giving the intensity that I wanted right down, right down there at the bottom of my blended piece. So eventually I did go over to my ink pads and I grabbed some chipped sapphire. Chipped sapphire is kind of like a dark blue, but it has a little bit of a purpley undertone to it, at least I think in my opinion. And it's the perfect kind of intensity um, for this blend here. So I went back and forth between the colors, just trying to get those blends looking a little bit better. And then I had this result. I think it looks really, really great. And it's going to look even better once I do my embossing. So oxide ink does stay wet a little bit longer. So I used my heat tool to speed along the drying process. And then I took a look at my embossing folder to make sure I was putting my paper down on the right side because I wanted the, the embossing to bump up on my colored side. So I wanted to make sure I put it in the embossing folder right, ran it through, and because I couldn't spray the paper to kind of soften the fibers so I would have a really good impression, because I wasn't able to do that because I'd already done my Distress Oxide blending, um, it, the paper did crack a little bit. But I just used my blending foams and I went back over those areas and it hid any of the white area that was kind of cracking through. Now, in order to see this tree pattern on the embossing, um, I thought I would take some white pigment ink on a foam blending tool and just lightly go over all of the trees. And as you can see, it starts to pull out that embossing and you can really see the texture on the embossing folder or the paper from the embossing folder. It just starts to bring out those trees and gives it a little bit more definition. So I added quite a bit of this white pigment ink. I didn't go back to the pad very often because I didn't want to add too much ink, but I did go back a few times to make sure that I had enough ink on my foam tool. And I used very, very, very light pressure for this. I didn't want to accidentally add a bunch of that white ink to the areas that weren't raised. So after I added all of that ink onto that, I was left with this result and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. We're gonna make it even more beautiful by doing some sparkles or glitter on top. So I'm getting out my big box that has some paper in the bottom of it and I'm going to be using a spray glitter to go over the top of this. And I'm using glitter dust in the color silver. And this is going to, you know, you shake it up really good and then you spray it over the top and um, I added quite a bit on this because I wanted lots of sparkle. Now make sure you've got windows open in a well-ventilated area. I had opened all three windows in my craft room, freezing myself out because <laughs> it was cold outside. I then took the A2 thin frame size from Simon Says Stamp and I wanted to add just a thin silver frame around the outside of this uh, embossed area. I thought it would look really, really pretty. Keep it simple, but also add a little bit of shine onto the background. And I did this also because my plan for the greeting was to have the greeting embossed in silver. So I wanted to have another area that had silver. So this thin frame die cuts out the frame and it 
so was stuck in the frame because it is so tiny. So the way you can adhere uh, the frame onto your project without getting all warped or being all weird is you can actually use the interior negative piece from when you cut out the frame. So I adhered my background to my card base before I did anything else because I wanted to make sure that everything was kind of adhered down and cut to the size in case I needed to trim it down to match the card base. I didn't need to trim it at all in this case. It was the perfect size, but I adhered it down and I just used some tape adhesive for that. I then used the negative piece of the silver cardstock and then I used some temporary adhesive to kind of stick that down onto the front of my card. Then I took some glue. This is Honeybee Precision Tip Glue. And I just ran a very thin line of glue around the outside of that silver cardstock. And then I was able to line up my very thin frame and have it just butt up right against that interior piece. And this is going to give it a straight edge to sort of uh, run against so that it, the line stays really, really straight. And um, it's just, I find this is the easiest way to use these thin frame dies. So I put that down and then I grabbed uh, my tweezers and I just picked up the corner of that interior piece and gently lifted that up because it was temporarily adhered. All right, so now I'm going to work on my greeting. I've got some vellum from Simus' stamp, and I'm going to use the Circle Saying stamp set. I've used this quite a few times since it came out in September, and I'm stamping right onto the vellum. I'm going to be doing some heat embossing, like I mentioned before. It's going to be in silver, so I'm using a powder tool, an anti-static powder tool, to prevent any of the embossing powder from going all over the place. And I'm stamping my greeting in Versamark ink. I'll stamp that down just once and gently walk my fingertips over that area. And then I can start to uh, sprinkle on the silver embossing powder. So this is Sterling embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. I love their silver embossing powder. And I hit that with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted. And this, it always surprises me how fast embossing powder melts on vellum, but I think it just looks amazing. I use the circle die, the coordinating die for the stamp set. And then as far as adhering this, I decided to add just a little tiny bit of glue right behind the embossed areas. Um, when I press it down onto my project, it does show the glue a tiny, tiny bit. You might see that in the final photos, but it's such a minute amount and so small that I really didn't concern myself with it. It was such a small amount and it's not a huge deal. Now, here's a tip for you. If you don't want to deal with that glue showing through, you could actually just put the adhesive everywhere on the back and then it would, you know, it wouldn't show at all. I also had that option. I could have done that as well. So I press that down and there we go. That's the finished card. It's deceptively simple, even though it's got a few different techniques on it. And I really, really love how that turned out. The embossing looks amazing. I love that glitter background. Really, really beautiful. So that finishes day six for the holiday card series. On screen, I've got three more videos for you. These are from the three previous years of the holiday card series, all day six. So you can check those out. I'll be back on Friday uh, with another live. So come back and join me. I'll be here at 11 a.m. Mountain Time and we'll be making day seven of the holiday card series. See you then.